This is Lesson 17 in Algebra 2, Subscripted Variables and Angle Relationships. Um, when you're doing story problems, one of the things that you'll notice is you have a variable. You have a letter, normally, that you're trying to find. And a lot of times in story problems, we use X and Y or different things like that as variables. But sometimes, using an X and Y isn't very helpful because we don't remember what X and Y stands for. So what we've come up with is another way of writing a variable so that it reminds us of what it stands for. So let's say that we are doing a problem, and the problem has to do with the number of nickels and the number of dimes. So what we'll do is we'll use, it's called the subscripted variable. We'll use this for the number of nickels, and we'll use... Um, this for the number of dimes. So number of nickels, number of dimes. So the n represents number, and then the subscript, which is these, sub means below, and script means writing. So we're writing a letter below that represents um, exactly what we're talking about as far as the number, the number of nickels and the number of dimes. So if we have a system of equations, such as the one they give us in example 17.1. They say the number of nickels plus the number of dimes equals 40. And they have another problem, 5 times the number of nickels plus 10 times the number of dimes equals 250. Okay, so they give us that system of equations. Now, this is the important thing. When we were doing systems of equations before, this would be the x and the y. So we'd have x plus y equals 40, and 5x plus 10y equals 250. You'd use elimination or substitution to solve for the x and the y and get an answer. It's the exact same thing. They're just using this as one variable, in this case x, and this is another variable, in this case y. The subscript does not change anything as far as this being a variable. It's just a symbol that we use so that you can better know what in the world you're finding here. Number of nickels, number of dimes. Okay, So it's two letters together, but it basically is your x value. It's just a symbol to represent what you're looking for. So don't let that really get you um, confused here. All right, so let's look at example 17.2. They are using a lot of subscripting variables in this. So they're giving us R, M, T, M, plus R, W, TW. So this could actually represent how fast the rate of Martha times the time of Martha plus the rate of William times the time of William because you're dealing with rate and time for two different people and we designate which person we're talking about with the subscript. So it just helps us to be able to know whose we're talking about. All right, and that equals 260. They're also saying that RM equals 40. So the rate of Martha, if you want to use that, is what you're doing. I just kind of made those up. And then we have time of m, t of m, plus t of w equals 5. So we have four different equations here. One, two, three, four. And what they're asking us to do is solve the following system of equations. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start substituting stuff in here in order to get what we need to, to find out. It says in the solution, these equations come from a word problem in which a person walked part of a distance and rode a motorcycle. Um, the rest, okay, so instead of Martha and William, this is motorcycle and this is walking. So this is how far, this is the rate they rode the motorcycle times the time they rode it, plus the rate they walked, plus the time they walked, giving us a total of the time they rode, or the 
distance they rode on the motorcycle plus the distance they walked gives us 260 miles. Now they're telling us that how fast they rode the motorcycle was 40, and the rate walking times the time walking, which they are saying that the rate walking was 60. Well, anyway. Um, and then if you take the time that they rode the motorcycle plus the time they walked, they walked a to or they walked and rode a total of five miles, if this is what we're looking at. All right, so let's go ahead and take this original problem right here and substitute. So we're going to put 40 in for R of M. And we don't know what T of M is, so we're going to leave that alone. And then the rate of walking, we're going to put 60. And we don't know what the time walking is. And that equals 260. Okay, so we just rewrote this equation. Um, we do know that this equation here is the time on the motorcycle plus the time walking is 5. So what we're going to do is we're going to set that equal to, um, eh, let's set it equal to the time on the motorcycle. So we're going to subtract time walking to the other side. So we're going to have 5 minus time walking. Okay, so Tm equals 5 minus Tw because we wanted to find a variable. So now Whenever we see a TM, we can put this in its place. So let's go ahead and do that. Everything is shut down. Okay. So now that we have it in that order, you'll notice that we have a five or a TW here and a TW there. So we replaced up here of having a T of M and a T of W to just having T of W's because, again, we used substitution and we took this and put it in place of the TM. So now we can go ahead, distribute, solve for the T of W, um, substitute that answer here, and we can find our T of M and we can find all the other variables that we're looking for there. So really that's all the further they went with this problem. Except let's kind of continue up. Let's take this last problem here, kind of move stuff out of the way, and show what they did. So they took 40 times 5 and got 200 minus 40 TW plus 60 TW equals 260. They added these two together and got 20, 60 minus 40. Subtracted 200 from both sides and we have 20 TW equals 60. So TW equals 3. So if we go back to our original of Tm plus Tw equals 5, and we know that that equals 3, we know that one has to be 2. So T of M is 2, T of W equals 3, and we found both, both of our T values. Okay. The next lesson in, in section 17 has to do with angle relationships. And if you look on example 7.3, we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. And there it is. And the question is, find x and y. So we're looking for x and y there. All right, so we're going to have to uh, come up with a couple of equations to help us do that. We know that 7x minus 2y equals 130 degrees because we know that this whole thing is 180. We take 50 away and we get 130. We also know that this one is, is going to be 50 because that one's 50. So we know that 5x minus 10y equals 50. 
So now we have a system of equations there that we can solve and uh, be able to find out what our x values and y values are. So it looks like the easiest one to eliminate will be the y because if I multiply this number here by 5 then I can eliminate that and because that will turn into a 10. So I'm going to multiply it by the entire top actually by negative 5 because I want this number here to be a positive 10 so that when I add the negative 10 it becomes 0. So when I multiply the top, let's do that in green now so you can see what we're doing here. We're multiplying at negative 5 times everything. Okay. And the bottom we're going to leave alone. Now when we add, those go away. Okay, so x then equals positive 20. So now I can take my x equals positive 20, and I can put it into any either one of these um, equations here to find my y value. So let's say that I put it in the, now let's put it in the top one. 7 times 20 minus 2y equals 130. So I have 140 minus 2y equals 130. Subtract 140 from both sides and I get negative 2y equals negative 10, so y equals positive 5. So now I found my x value and I found my y value based on angle relationships that we learned up here. Alright, so that is uh, lesson 17 in Algebra 2.